Hello, everybody, and welcome to your Aries Rising 2023 horoscope. Uh, this video is meant for the Aries Risings. You can watch this from your sun sign. doesn't really matter, but it's meant for your rising sign. Anyway, this is a two-part video. I made a video going into all of the major transits of 2023. Make sure you watch that because I go into the transits in depth, and this video is meant to go specifically into how it's going to affect you and uh, where this is going to be showing up in your life. So how this video is going to work is I'm going to be just opening up quickly with the major transits. Then I'm going to go, then I'm going to be going into advice for the signs. And then we're going to be going month by month into 2023 and specifically how it's going to be affecting you. So make sure you like this video so you can come back to it throughout the year and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you're looking forward to uh, throughout this year. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started. So the major transits that we really have this year, um, we have a few more than this, but this is really what I want you guys to focus on. It's really March, and I've said this before. I'm going to keep saying it uh, until it happens. March of 2023 is probably the biggest month of uh, this year. We're going to be having Saturn go into Pisces, and we're going to be having Pluto go into Aquarius. These are two major transits that are really going to be shifting things. Then a little bit later on in May, we're going to be having Jupiter go into Taurus. This is going to be really nice. Um and then, of course, later on in the summer, we're going to be having the nodes shift. So we will be seeing the eclipses, shifts, axes, and specifically for you, Aries, this will be big for you because it's in your sign. And then later on, we have the Venus retrograde in Leo starting the summer. And those are really the major transits, and I'll be going into them as we go along. But let's talk about some quick advice. So I think for the Aries rising, the best thing for you guys to do this year is focus on yourself. Um, there's going to be a lot of attention being called towards you, your body, your image, who you are. Um, defining who you are. There's going to be a lot of letting go of relationships. Um, I think there's also going to be going within and some solitude this year. As we talk about Saturn going into Pisces, there's going to be this moment where you do a lot more internal reflection and you start figuring out, you know, parts of yourself that you repress, parts of yourself that you don't acknowledge. And so this would be a really good year to go a little bit more deeper into yourself and kind of, you know, explore that is probably a good way to look at it. Uh, not losing your mind. <laughs> I know this is a little funny, but there's going to be some things that really challenge you this year. Uh, and where that challenge is really going to probably come up is like mental stuff and not necessarily just mental health. I don't really like, you know, just saying that as a broad sweeping thing, but you know, if you are doing something and getting a result that you don't like, this would be a really good opportunity to not keep repeating that action that keeps getting you that result that you don't like. Don't, you know, do the self-sabotage stuff. Don't do things that you know, aren't going to be good for you. Uh, don't get in your own way either. I think this year is going to really bring a lot of that stuff up. Things that maybe you hadn't seen before and things that maybe you didn't recognize, uh, are going to be getting in your way. So try not to get in your own way and focus on money and fun. There's so much fun for you guys this year. There's a really big change in how you guys play, how you guys relate. Uh, money is really big for you guys this year. Relationships are going to be big for you guys this year too. And so really focus on yourself, focus on your money and, you know, do the deep work, get out of your head, figure out where you can improve and focus on that. So let's go ahead and go to uh, January. So the two major events that we have going on in January is Mars stationing direct in Gemini. Uh, if you've been watching my horoscopes for a while, I've talked a lot about Mars being retrograde. Mars has been in Gemini since August. So August, September, October, November, December. January is when Mars stations direct. So it's not going to be until about the 12th when you feel like you're going to be able to start moving forward. Mars is the planet of action and drive and energy. And as it's been moving backwards, we might be, you know, replanning things, redoing things. And once we get to Mars stationing direct, it'll feel like a big forward movement. And this is in your third house. So this has to deal with communication, short distance traveling, technology. I like to complain about the third house because it rules so many different things. But think about your, you know, your day-to-day -day schedule, how you use the knowledge that you have. Think of people that are close to you, like literal physical people that are physically close to you. So like, you know, your siblings, your aunts and uncles, roommates possibly. There might have been a lot of back and forth and maybe some arguments, but uh, this is where things are going to start to feel like they're moving forward in this area after moving backwards for so long. And then a little bit later on into uh, January, we're also going to be having Mercury Station Direct. Mercury will go retrograde right before the new year. And this is going to be in your 10th house. So this is about career, your reputation, mostly work and career stuff. And so once we get to the 18th, you know, for example, when we get into about the new year, uh, Mercury will be retrograde, so there might be this delay or this reshaping or this replanning of your work, your career, uh, maybe a change in time, maybe a change in management. Uh, but once Mercury stations direct, you will see all of this begin to move forward. 
And so the only other thing I want to bring up about January is the fact that Jupiter is going to be transiting Aries again. So uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I'm going to be making a video about this. But in the summer of 2022, we had Jupiter ingress into Aries from, I believe, May, June, July, August, September, and then in October went back to Pisces. So think about what was going on for you in that summer if you felt and if you felt more confident or if you felt more brave. Jupiter is all about spirituality and beliefs and it's in your first house of yourself and your body. So a lot of you also could have gained weight. Jupiter loves to expand whatever it touches and this is the first house of the body. So um as we get into the beginning of 2023, Jupiter will start to transit your first house again. So again, expanding the body, expanding yourself, uh being more confident, being more self-reliant, being more brave. This is all brought into focus as we get into the new year. But like I said, uh, it's really Mars stationing direct in your third house is really when things are going to start to move forward. Mars is your ruling planet. So we're talking about, you know, you, your identity, your body, yourself, your image. And it's been retrograde in the third house. Maybe you've had some tech problems. Maybe you've had some car problems. Maybe you've just been really busy and, you know, doing too many things at once. And so over the winter, as you've kind of changed your plans, this is when things will finally start to move forward. But that's not going to be until the 13th. So you might have... You know, New Year's Eve isn't going to feel like New Year, New You. It'll take about a couple of weeks. But then as we move forward again, uh, really it's January uh, 18th is when Mercury stations direct in your 10th house. And this is when things will really clear up. You know, if there was a delay or if there was a rethinking of your work, your career, your reputation, the public image of you, this is when things will start to become clear and your plans will be able to move forward again after maybe a little bit of delay or a rethinking uh, or, or a time of rethinking things. So that's really the main parts of January. Let's go ahead and jump into February. So February, the only thing that's going on is Mercury is going to be leaving shadow. February is a pretty chill month, to say the least. It's not that it's bad, but it's not a lot of action. And really, Mercury leaving shadow is really the only highlight. And again, this is in your 10th house of your career and your reputation. But this is coming back to New Year's Eve. When Mercury goes retrograde, there's going to be this delay or this pause with your work, with your career. And then once Mercury stations direct in January, everything gets worked out. But you're not going to be able to move on past what you were doing then until we get to February 7th. So when it comes to career topics and it comes to work, there's going to be this, you know, kind of pause and delay and going back and forth from the end of December, all of January. And then once we get to the beginning of February, things will be able to move forward. So again, as we pull up the chart here, let's just kind of go day by day. I believe it's January 7th, and I might have to rewind here a few times to make sure it's Aries rising, but <clears throat> yeah, February 7th, Mercury leaves shadow, and by this point too, Venus is in Pisces. I think things will be a little bit more calm, a little bit more easier on you. Um, you might uh, enjoy more time to yourself or more time you know, privately with your partner if you're in a relationship of some sort, but that's really it. February is a really, really short month, not a lot going on, which is good because March is the big month. And so there's a lot to talk about here. The first thing that we have going on is Venus conjoining Jupiter and Aries. This isn't typically like the biggest deal transit, but it's both of the best planets in the night sky. So Venus and Jupiter are two benefics coming together. So we like this, right? We want, It's like double the good energy. <clears throat> this is happening in your first house of the self. Again, the body, your image, your personality. And it's just a prominent house in general. Lots of bigger things tend to happen when you have transits to your first house. And so this is on March 2nd. Let's go ahead and fast forward to there. Let's go backwards here so we can get Aries rising. So the other thing that's uh, important about this transit is that this is on Chiron. So Chiron is the wounded healer. There's the sense of like, you know, things kind of being painful, but healing at the same time. And this is, you know, Venus, your second house ruler of money and finances in your first house. And she's also fallen in Aries. So there might be some sort of spending money on your body or putting more money into your body or your image or your health that might be more important. Venus also rules your seventh house of relationships. And so this could signify a, um, I don't want to say a great day in relationships, but there might be the sense of someone admitting that they have a crush on you or some type of relationship dynamic that seems like someone really wants you and it's almost kind of, you know, intense. If you're single and you're looking for that, this might be great. Uh, if you're already in a relationship, this might be a little bit weird and complicated, but this seems very joyful. This seems very positive, right? Uh, this is an Aries too. This is feeling fierce. This is feeling fiery. And I think a lot of it's like spending money on yourself, to be honest with you guys just because it is your uh, second house ruler conjoining Jupiter in the first, you know, go big or go home. 
And so then after that, just a few days later, on uh, in fact, five days later, we have Saturn entering Pisces. Again, this is one of the bigger transits this year. And Saturn has been an Aquarius for the past two and a half years. So there's been a really big focus on your friendships, your networks, the people that you're around, especially if it's related to your work and your business. Saturn and Aquarius could have brought more divide, like maybe not spending as much time with friends and maybe feeling like, you know, you know, you're isolated or outcasted from your friends. Or this might have been a time of really organizing your networks and really uh, gaining control or uh, authority over a group of people. And so as Saturn enters Pisces, it's going to be entering your 12th house. So the 12th house is all about isolation, self-sabotage, repressed thoughts and feelings, and hidden enemies. It's not the best house ever, right? It does rule hiding away in the terms of like healing, you know, when you need to just kind of be by yourself and go on a retreat or whatever, so you're doing okay. But the big thing I want to talk about is Saturn rules your uh, 10th house of your career and your reputation, right? And it's going into the 12th house, which is a hidden house. It's a secret house. So there might be a part of your work or a part of your job that becomes much more secretive, that becomes much more private, that becomes much more, you know, uh, behind closed doors. This is also hidden enemies. So this could be a boss or someone that's kind of going, you know, going out of their way to mess you up, but you don't really know who it is or where it's coming from. Saturn also rules your 11th house of friendships, of communities, of networks, and it's going into your 12th house of hidden enemies. And so there's going to be the sense of, you know, maybe losing some friends, but I also kind of see this as a time of just maybe spending not, you know, not being worried about being social, not being worried about being with people and more worried about, you know, how, what you're doing, how you're going through things and your mindset around that, right? The 12th house also rules the subconscious and, you know, repress parts of yourself. So Saturn being back here is like, it's time to take a lot more maturity and responsibility over the things that you might put on the back burner for the sake of, you know, just being happy. But this seems like a really big change in your, your career and your friendships. And then that is followed up by uh, Pluto entering Aquarius. So long story short, again, I have a podcast about this uh, on the delineation that I go into, but it's a long-term transit. Pluto will be in Aquarius for the next 20 years, and it's going to go back and forth for the next couple of years, right? So there's not you know, something immediately that I can tell you, but Pluto rules things like power and fear. And it's going to be going into your 11th house of your community, your networks, your friends. And again, sometimes that does relate to your career, of course, depending on your chart. But the big thing here is, again, this is on March, what is this, 22nd? Let's move this over. So Pluto has been in your 10th house of career, of public reputation, of, you know, this can also, it's the 10th, 4th axis, so this can deal with parents too. And Pluto rules things like corruption, power, fear. And you can think from 2008, there's probably been a lot of changes, especially when it comes to power dynamics and control dynamics within your career and your reputation. Now that is going into your 11th house of friends and communities. And so this is going to be a time of really recognizing what power and influence you have over people and really looking at how do you use that? Are you afraid of that power? Are you afraid of, you know, groups of people and, you know, mob kind of energy? Or do you have a, or do you have that as a resource where you can use that for your own potential benefit or, you know, empower yourself? and empower others. So there's a really big shift when it comes to your friendship dynamics, right? Your 11th house ruler of friends is going into the 12th house of, you know, isolation, hidden enemies, but then your but then Pluto's going into your 11th house. So a big, you know, power shift is going into your 11th house of friends. And that's going to be a 20 year long transit. So don't expect to just understand what that means, you know, once we even get to March. But then the other highlight of March is Mars entering Cancer. This one is going to actually really impact you guys. One, because you're ruled by the planet Mars. So because you're in Aries rising, you can just watch wherever Mars is at and it can be pretty good about telling exactly what you're going through. So Mars is going to enter Cancer on March 25th and this is entering your fourth house. So we're talking about the home, family, living situation, your heritage, your parents. And so there becomes this big focus on your home once we get to the end of March, which this is also important because um, Mars is in fall in the sign of cancer. And so what that means is Mars doesn't do that well here, right? Mars is the planet of fights and conflicts, and it's in the sign of cancer, the sign of nurturing and protecting. And so as Mars goes into cancer, there might be this like gut wrenching feeling that kind of hits you guys. And this is going to be a time where you probably stay more isolated and you probably stay more at home. 
Mars in Cancer, this might be taking care of a parent because Mars also rules your eighth house of death, other people's money, shared resources, things that are you know not your business. And so the planet that rules you and the planet that rules other people's business is going into your fourth house of home and family, and it's going into fall. There might be something that happens where you might have to take your energy and focus it on the home and the living situation regardless if you would like to or not. And this is taking a defensive position, right? Mars and Cancer is like fighting a fight through defense, not necessarily being on the offense. And so, you know, at this time, Venus is in your second house. Money is looking pretty good. Uh, Mercury's in your first house. Things are becoming a lot more clear, but there is gonna be the sense of, I have to do this, or I'm stuck here doing this. And there is gonna be this big focus on your home and your living situation. <clears throat> So that starts at the end of March. March is a really, really big month. You're gonna see a lot of things change. But then that brings us to April. And there's three main highlights to go over th uh, in April. The first thing is this Jupiter, Kazemi, and Aries. If you're not familiar with what a Kazemi is, it is when a planet conjoins the sun and that's looked at as like a, a, a restarting point for that planet. Now, Jupiter did go into Aries for a little bit in 2022. Um, but when you have a Jupiter, Kazemi, that really like restarts the planet's energy. And so this is, again, happening in your first house of the self, body, image, personality, your prominence. And so there's going to be this kind of refresh uh, of who you are. Now, the problem I have with this is, let's get to April 11th here and switch the hour back. So the only problem I have with this, again, is this is Jupiter, and Jupiter is your 12th house ruler of self-sabotage, isolation, alienation, repress, unacknowledged parts of yourself. And it's in your first house of yourself. So there might be this feeling of maybe doing something that I don't want to say that you know you shouldn't do or maybe, you know, again, going out of your own way. Getting in your own way could easily be an issue, but this also might be a good time to really recognize that you are getting in your own way and really kind of looking at yourself through a new lens. Jupiter also rules your ninth house of spirituality, astrology. Um, it rules far distance travel, foreign languages, um, higher education, publishing, broadcasting. And as it conjoins the sun, which is your fifth ruler, which is about like love, romance, sex, pleasure, there's going to be this kind of maybe creative boost that really comes to your personality on April 11th. And this is important because this sets us up for the solar eclipse in Aries. So like I said before, the nodes are going to be shifting signs this year, but we get our first eclipse in Aries before that happens. And that happens on 419 slash 420. This is a total solar eclipse in Aries. And again, first house of the self, your body, your image. So this is kind of hardcore. Uh, solar eclipses bring like emergency kind of events like, uh-oh, this is happening. Uh-oh, this is, you know, going on. And this is in your first house of yourself, of, again, who you are. And so, again, this is also at 29 Aries. There's something about this that is just like all of a sudden – it, you're just reshaping who you are. You know, maybe you're getting rid of some relationships. You're getting rid of some gunk. There is this like extreme moment where you're like, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to change. And it has a lot to do with health stuff. The first house typically rules good health. But when you have like eclipses in your first house, it's something about like your body or your personality or your image that really gets brought up into question. I think it's interesting that the, that your ruling planet is Mars and Cancer at this time. And so this might be like, again, something needs to really change in you and change in your personal life in order for things to kind of manifest in your outwardly life. So expect a big, an eclipse season, you know, they're referred to as like portals. So like kind of expect to open up a portal here when it comes to, you know, clarity of self, ambition and just raw energy. Uh, that's a lot of what this is looking like. So on one end, it is a little bit extreme, so it can be bad. But on the other end, this looks really good. I think this is also kicking off what is going to be the next year and a half of self-pursuit, relentless self-pursuit of growing yourself, understanding yourself, being like, what else can I sink my teeth into and be successful at? And that all starts here. Um, and then, of course, literally two days later, we get not our first Mercury retrograde of the year, but pretty much the first Mercury retrograde of the year. And this happens in Taurus. So going back to what I said earlier, a lot of this year has to do with money. And right after this eclipse, there's a Mercury retrograde in your second house of money, finances, possessions, food, resources, things like that. And so literally, we go two days later, and Mercury's going to go retrograde right here, right? It's also going to be conjoining Uranus. So this seems very sudden. Something is suddenly changing with your money. Something, you know, maybe you make an impulsive purchase. Maybe all of a sudden you have to buy something that you weren't necessarily expecting. 
but Mercury has been going through your second house for a little while and being in shadow. So before this happens, you're already going to know what this is already about. But this is definitely a delay or a rethinking or a reshaping your understanding of value, of money, of finances. What's important about this, though, is Mercury is going to retrograde in this part of the sky, and it's kind of ushering Jupiter in. As we get into next month, Jupiter is going to be entering Taurus, and this is kind of, you know, and Jupiter is going to be really, we want Jupiter and Taurus in your second house. It's going to be really good for money. But this is kind of like, you know, for example, if you've ever heard that analogy, it's like if you made a million dollars right now, you wouldn't even know what to do with it. You wouldn't even know where to store it. You wouldn't even know where to put it. This is one of those moments if it's like if you're expecting a million dollars, you might want to get prepared for a million dollars. So that brings us to the next month, which is May. So again, when Mercury retrogrades, that is still in the middle of eclipses. And we get our second eclipse, and that is going to be the lunar eclipse in Scorpio. So over this past year and a half, since the beginning of 2022, we've been having the eclipses in Taurus and Scorpio. And this is the last eclipse in Scorpio. This is in your eighth house of other people's money, death, debt more specifically, and taxes. It also was the occults and secrets and stuff like that. But if you are in a financial situation, you owe money, or maybe you're expecting some type of inheritance, a lot of that is coming into play in May. So let's kind of look at it real quick. So this is May 5th, this happened, Cinco de Mayo. I never mentioned holidays, of course, the only holiday I mentioned is Cinco de Mayo. And so again, this is lighting up your second house and your eighth house, and Mercury is retrograde in your second house. So this seems like, you know, maybe in order to, you know, get that kind of money, you know, uh, you, you have to pay off some debt. You have to handle some uh, other people's money or resources that you need. Maybe you need to make more money so you can take care of other people. This is an eclipse in your eighth house, again, of death, shared resources, other people's money, and it's a fallen moon in Scorpio. So there's something that maybe you don't want to do. It could be related to a family member, and this could, I mean, you've had the eclipses in your eighth house. Maybe a family member has passed away. But this is really kind of like really highlighting that area for the last time. So I want you to think about May 15th of 2022, and I want you to think of about November or the end of October, beginning of November of 2022, because this is bringing all of that back into play. So then the next thing that we have going on is Jupiter goes into Taurus, and that happens about a week or uh, what is that? Yeah, a, a week and a couple days after. This is, I mean, you guys are having a good year in general, but this is really where it gets good. Jupiter is all about expansion and growth and opportunity and beliefs and hope and faith, and it's going into your second house of money, finances, possessions. I also bring up food because this could be a big year about your guys' diet and your exercise because your first house and second house are getting kind of lit up. So let's go ahead and look into that. So this is, again, in my opinion, like really the big fun thing of 2022. I mean, my bad, 2023. And Jupiter, again, uh, rules your ninth house of spirituality, astrology, far distance travel, foreign countries, higher education, and publishing. And it also rules your 12th house where Saturn is now at. So again, there's something that's going on with career that goes behind more cl closed doors. And then Jupiter as, is actually going to be sextiling Saturn here. So that's, this is really good for your money. Whatever ends up happening in March is going, to be end, is going to end up being very good for your money. And as Jupiter goes in there, there's going to be this expansion of your possessions. This might be buying more things. This might be purchasing more things or purchasing bigger things. Venus is in Cancer in your fourth house, so this might be purchasing a bigger home or things for your home. But either way, this is really expanding, again, money, possessions, food, resources, what you have. And this is right when Mercury stations direct. So this is like a bunch of things got cleared up and then you got your payday. So then we get to about four days later, and this is where Mars enters Leo. So um, the reason why this is a bigger deal for you guys is because you're having a lot of fifth house uh, activations this year. The fifth house rules sex, passion, creativity, arts, children, recreation. It's really the fun house, and it's what makes yourself you. And Mars, again, is your ruling planet. So whatever Mars is doing in the sky, generally, you can be like, that's what you're doing. And so as Mars goes into Leo, there's going to be much more action and uh, energy going towards children, going towards sex, love, romance, creativity, arts, music. It's very Mars and Leo. So it's being very passionate, being very, you know, bold and, you know, triumphant around it. This will square Jupiter. So maybe you spend some money uh, on these arts and Jupiter is also in Taurus. So spending money on the arts or spending money on luxuries is kind of up that alley. But maybe you spend some money on uh, some, you know, music equipment. You start expressing yourself more. 
Uh, Mars will go opposite Pluto, so this will challenge your friendships in a lot of ways, but this seems like a really big forward movement towards this very creative, very fun and exciting part of your chart, which is also gonna have a lot more activations in it as we go on throughout the year. Uh, again, if you're liking this video, please give me a like. It really helps me out. And then you could save it and you can come back to it throughout the year so you know exactly what's going on as you go uh, into 2023. So then we get to June. And this is where good things become even better. And that's where Jupiter conjoins Rahu. Now, this is... Um, you know, in some traditions, this could be looked at as like a scary or a negative thing. I don't really think so. It kind of just depends on your situation. But Rahu, the North Node, is this, you know, all-consuming part of our lives. It's like where you're kind of headed, where you're focused, where you're hungry for. And in these past uh, year and a half, the North Node has been in your second house of money, of finances, of resources. So there's been a really big urge for more money, buying more things, really focusing on security and stability within your money. Um, you've had to get maybe rid of some debt or sell some assets off in order to keep that wealth. But as we get to June, this is June 1st that this happens. Let me come back here. Jupiter conjoins the North Node. So this is like over consuming to the max. So where this can be bad is spending like a gang of money on something, really overdoing it with the expenses. I'm frugal, I'm cheap, so I always tell people, like, don't do that. If you could save money, do it. But maybe this is a time where you want to ball out and you've got a little bit of money to save or you got a little bit of money to spend. I mean, that's also clear here because Jupiter is, um, you know, in your second house. It's expanding your wealth. It's expanding your finances, your resources. So as Jupiter conjoins the North Node, it's, it's kind of like, you know, imagine chugging like a beer, but then, you know, you don't have to swallow it. It just goes straight down your throat. This is really expanding things, really, you know, again, attaining more wealth, purchasing more wealth, buying more things. I think that's really the thing to be a little bit more like skeptical of. And this is also when Mercury leaves shadow too. So it's like all of this money stuff got, you know, cleared up. Then Jupiter comes back in, uh, expands this money stuff. And then it's like really game on by the time we get to June when it comes to money. Looking really, really good in my opinion. And this is also the lunar return of that eclipse season too. So there's a lot of money stuff that really becomes clear and really extreme by the time we get to June 1st. And this could also be a big expense too. Again, you know, Jupiter expands your money not, or you could spend more money at the same time with it. So then we get to Saturn going retrograde. So if you've taken my how to read a birth chart course, which is also in the description below, uh, every retrograde is different. You know, there's Mercury retrogrades, Jupiter, all the planets go retrograde, but each one is a little bit different. And Saturn will go retrograde for about a third of the year. And the way I like to analogize Saturn is uh, Saturn retrogrades is Saturn being direct is like taking on more responsibility and taking on more duty or you're given more responsibility, you're given more obligations. And then when Saturn goes retrograde, your mindset shifts around it. So this could be like maybe you were taking on our responsibilities and it was nice. This is where you kind of question it and you start to see the parts of it that you don't like, the things that you kind of have to overcome, right? And, you know, when you're in a, when you're in a position of growing and you're in a position of doing better in your life, there's moments where it's exciting and then you get dull with it and then you start to question it. That's what this is. And more importantly, Saturn rules your 10th house of your career and your friends, and it's going retrograde in your 12th house of isolation, self-sabotage, repressed thoughts and feelings, and hidden enemies. So there might be this part of the year where you kind of really go, oh, maybe I am spending a little bit more time alone. Or maybe you're like, hey, I'm actually really liking this time I spend alone, maybe owning your own business, doing things much more on your own. But you're going to start seeing that position in a different way, especially if Saturn in your 12th house is like, you are limited by your repressed thoughts. This might be where you realize where you're getting in your own way. Then, uh, well, I don't, let's go ahead and show that real quick because then that can get us to the next thing. Um, and this is two weeks into June. This is June 16th, by the way. And again, all of the dates are on here. So if you want to know what's going on, but yeah, pretty much by, here we go. There we go. Saturn's red. So as it begins to go backwards in your 12th house, this is going to be kind of, you know, changing your experience of discipline around, you know, the unconscious repressed parts of yourself. But then we get to June 19th. So this is a big day. I would really highlight this one for you guys because Venus enters shadow. Now, this is in your fifth house of sex, passion, creativity, children, all of the fun stuff, right? But 
Venus has been in Leo for a little while. So Venus is all about fun, pleasure, romance, connection, art, and music. She rules your second house of money. She rules your seventh house of relationships. So a lot of this has to do with money and finances and also other people and relationships. Venus enters shadow. So there's something that's going on on June 19th that you're going to come back to. So this might be something to do with a child, something to do with, you know, creativity, art, music, sex, relationships. Venus and Mars are here. So you're, there's a lot of passionate, fun activity in the creative space for you. Again, a really good year for you guys. But as Venus hits this degree, there's an event that's going to happen that you're going to come back to here in a couple months. So what a Venus, and this is Venus getting ready to go retrograde and Venus retrogrades are value shifts, right? There's something that, you know, you might be like, Hey, I think fun looks this way. And then something happens where you might be like, again, this might be like a change in your sexuality, a change in your, rec uh, your recreational pursuits, a change in how you do your music or how you do your art, but Venus enters shadow. So there's something going on here on June 19th. That's focused on the creative area. That's focused on the fun area that you know, maybe it becomes dull or maybe something is, is lackluster or Mars is here. So maybe you're a little bit too intense into it. Something's going to change. And just really, again, circle this day because you're going to come back to it. So that brings us to July. So once we get to July, um, Mars is going to be ingressing into Virgo. So Mars ingresses aren't the biggest deal ever, but it is your ruling planet. So it's a little bit more important. And Mars is going to be entering your sixth house of work, labor, routine, health, habits, pets. That comes up a lot. Coworkers and employees. So Mars rules fights and conflicts and energy and drive. And as it goes into your sixth house, it's going to be much more focused on these topics, putting in the effort, really focusing on your health, really focusing on your day-to-day -day tasks, really like going after it. And this is Mars and Virgo, right? This is being hyper-specific, hyper-organized, really getting into the nitty-gritty details. And I think a lot of this also comes back down to your, your habits and your beliefs because when we go to the chart here and we pull this up, this is on July 10th, this is happening. Let me show you guys something real quick. So Mars enters Virgo and it's going to be making an opposition to Saturn within a couple days after this. So this is really like Saturn in your 12th house, all of these problems that you have that are coming up and you might struggle finding the source of them. This is where it's like you really need to, you know, if, if you've been getting in your own way, this is when you need to like attack it. This is when you need to like go after it. And like Saturn and Pisces might make you feel confused or lost on what's next. This is where it's like, okay, let's get a grip and let's organize things. This is kind of like, I use hoarders analogies all the time, but this is like, you know, when you watch an episode of hoarders, they get overwhelmed with all of their stuff. And then there's someone there that's like, okay, well, we're going to handle this, 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 and this. That's what this is. So this is really about getting organized, really getting detailed, really focused on the health stuff. But then a really big shift occurs. And that's when the North node and the South node enter Aries and Libra. Again, this is on the 18th. This is a really big deal because this is where the eclipses are going to start taking place, right? This is going to be hitting your first house. So again, you, you, the self, and it's going to be hitting your seventh house of relationships and other people. So this is where the North Node, again, is this direction that you are being called to go in for better or for worse. So again, uh, let's move this back here. So the North Node going into Aries is like, the North Node is like, again, this hunger and this urge, and it's in Aries, the sign of ambition and starting and initiating and war. And it's in your first house of the self and the body. There's going to be this extreme pull towards you. Like, you know, maybe you've been really focused on others lately. This is going to be a time that's really focused on you. And to counterbalance that, the south node is going to be entering Libra. So the south node is like a drain. It's exhausting. It's this thing that you have to purge or get rid of. And this is going through your seventh house of relationships. So for some of you, that might be, you know, breaking up with your partner. But if you're in like a committed relationship and everything's fine, this might be like your partner going through things, get them going through a change. And as they're going through a change, that gives you time to focus on you. So that's going to be a really big shift, but this will not come up uh this will come up in a more important way once we get to eclipse season. So then after that, once we get to uh, July 22nd, we have the Venus retrograde in Leo. This is really the highlight of the summer. And this, I really love this guy. Uh, really love this for you guys. Um, if you are single, this is going to be really good for relationships. But what I want you to think about was what was going on in summer of 2015 
whatever was going on in summer of 2015, there's going to be this weird repeating of that again because Venus retrogrades in the same sign every eight years. So eight years ago, she retrograded at this exact same spot. So we can kind of figure out what might be next for you. So as we go to July 22nd, boom, Venus goes retrograde. And so this is a value shift, right? You are shifting your value. I mean, Venus rules your second house of values and resources, and it's going retrograde in Leo in your fifth. You know, where do you spend your money uh, on, you know, recreation, on creativity, on children? Venus in Leo is very like, I want to be seen. I want to be witnessed. I want to be the center of attention. And there's something about that changing. So maybe you're uncomfortable with being the center of attention, or maybe you get a lot of it. But this is something to do with your money changing with your fifth house of, again, sex, love, romance, recreation, fun, pleasure. Um, and this is also the seventh house ruler of relationships going retrograde in your fifth house. So this might be changing the way, again, that you have sex with people or that you relate to people or that you connect to people, uh, maybe if it's on a value level. But this is going to be a really big shift in fun, pleasure. Um, it's really good. Like, to be honest with you, might be might be. People might be like, oh my God, Venus is going retrograde. This is a fun Venus retrograde. It really is. Jupiter is also in Taurus at the same time. So there's a lot more focus on the Taurus stuff, on the Venus stuff, on valuables, on, on what you find secure, on what you enjoy, what is pleasurable for you. And so it's like Jupiter's in Taurus and you're, you're thinking about this stuff already and then it's time for a change. So then that's July and that's really the main parts of this year. Now we're going to be going into the, I mean, every single month after this, but that is really the highlight of everything. Then once we get into August, we will have a Venus Kazemi, not the biggest deal. This is just the halfway point of the Venus retrograde. And this is where that value shift becomes clear, right? Venus being an evening star and hanging out. It's like, you're getting all these things. You're wanting all these things. Venus goes retrograde. And it's like, all right, this is going under a change. You may not know what that looks like, but then that change fully gets set in by August 13th. That is where it's like, you know, I value this different. No, I'm seeing this different. And you really start to recognize that difference again. Fifth house, sex, passion, creativity, arts, children, especially children is a really big part of the fifth house. So let's go ahead. And again, that's not even for a couple weeks after Venus goes retrograde. And that's going to be again on the 13th here. What's important about this too is that it's squaring Uranus. So there might be a lot of things that you try out or that you do that's a little bit eccentric or a little bit different. And it might be good. Like it's always good to maybe try something random, but it also might destabilize things. So this might be a moment where you're kind of like the change that you have to make is kind of random. And it's kind of like there's no just putting your toe in the water. You kind of have to jump into the pool. So then after that, we get our second or second, third, whatever you want to call it, Mercury retrograde of the year. This is happening in Virgo. Again, this is on August 24th. Again, Virgo rules your sixth house of work, labor, routine. So the 10th house is what rules your career and your reputation. The sixth house is the labor that goes unseen, right? Like you are watching this video. This is a 10th house thing. You're not seeing all of the prep and all of the prep and, and all the stuff that goes into making this. That's sixth house. So there's a lot of focus there, but Mercury rules your sixth house of Virgo. So this is really changing your schedule, your plans, your time, how you do work. It rules your third house of other people. But this is a change in your health, your habits, your routine, your work, maybe changing jobs, maybe getting a different job. Maybe if you run your own business, changing your schedule a little bit, trying to work out the kinks. This is a great time to really try new things, especially in your habits. And it's Mercury and Virgo, right? Get in order, get it precise, get it specific. This thing, and this is also trining Jupiter and Taurus too. So it's like, maybe you're making more money now and maybe you could take more time off or maybe you need more money. So you need to be working even more. This just seems like the really big switch over when it comes to work health and also pets too. This could be bringing up pets. This could be bringing up coworkers and employees. If that is your situation, this might be a miscommunication or a delay. That would be another thing with Mercury retrogrades, a delay or a rethinking or a replanning due to unforeseen circumstances with your health, with your day-to-day -day activities, with your work and the labor that you put in. And then after that, uh, August 28th, just four days later, Mars enters Libra. So again, what's more important about this is now the south node is in Libra. So there's a lot more activations coming into your seventh house. And Mars is your ruling planet again. This is, again, seventh house of relationship, others, open enemies. That's specific, too, because not only does the seventh house rule relationships, this rules anybody, your, your plumber, your doctor, your lawyer, some guy on the street that's harassing you. That's the seventh house. 
So that happens on August 28th, and Mars goes into detriment in Libra. So Mars is all about fights and conflicts, and in Libra, it's all about peace and balance. So, And this is also your ascendant ruler, the thing that represents you, and it's in the seventh house, and it's in detriment. So there might be this feeling of insecurity or indecisiveness with relationships. There might be this kind of um, passive aggression in your seventh house of relationships, and it might feel very draining and exhausting, and that's going to come up a little bit later on in the year. But there becomes this big shift on relationships, and it's Mars and Libra. For some of you, that might just be finding more peace in relationships and not being so, – you're an Aries rising. Maybe not being so argumentative or being so confrontational. Maybe you're trying to find some more peace with relationships. But your energy really becomes focused on relationships almost at a detrimental level. Now, this might be good depending on if you're born in the day or night. But while your seventh house ruler – of relationships is retrograde in the fifth house. I feel like something about the what, like what you want and what your needs and desires are in relationships will change. And I think that might be really obvious when Mars goes into Libra. So that's August as we jump into September. Venus stations direct in Leo. This is where it's like, okay, you've undergone the shift. This is how you value things differently. Morning star Venus is very ambitious and like, look at me, especially in Leo. It's like, this is what I'm doing, this is what I want. Again, it's in your fifth house, creativity, sex, love, passion. This is like, you know, possibly a lot of you are going to be starting a new relationship. A lot of you are going to be maybe getting over a relationship and being single for the first time. And there's going to be this like hope and ambition and just kind of like, you know, look at me energy. And it's going to be really exciting. And maybe that wasn't a thing that you did before, but now it is. That happens on uh, September 4th. But this is the catch. And this is the most interesting part about September 4th to me is when Venus stations direct, Jupiter stations retrograde, which is the other thing that's going on. So again, every planet retrogrades differently, but Jupiter going uh, direct is like expanding all of these things, giving you all of this stuff. And then when Jupiter retrogrades, it's not that the money stops flowing in, but your belief system changes, right? Jupiter is about faith. And when Jupiter goes retrograde, it's like going without that faith or going without that hope or you know, again, things always seem it's like it's like when you want a product or you want to buy something and then you're like, this is going to my life's going to be better when I get it. And then you get it. And then it's not that way anymore. That's a lot of what Jupiter retrograde is going to be like. And why this is so interesting is Venus, Jupiter's in Venus's sign. And so there's this idea of Jupiter of like believe like focus more on the Venus stuff. Venus does this whole retrograde business, squares Jupiter. So there's something about money and passion and recreation that's kind of getting in the way of each other. Maybe you're spending a lot of money on recreation and partying. But then as Jupiter goes retrograde, it's like, all right, you're doing this and you are living this way and you're feeling great. But this might call it like, for example, it's easier to say things in your head, but then when you actually do it, you have to go under a completely different mindset. And so this is really a mindset shift, a shift, a belief shift when it comes to your money, your finances, your resources, and what you value. There's so many Venus things going on here, right? Jupiter's in Taurus, the Mar Mars is in Libra, the South Node is in Libra, Venus just stationed direct. So a really big focus on relationships and money. And this could even be your relationship to like material goods. So those are all things, again, Venus stations direct in Leo on September 4th, Jupiter stations retrograde on September 4th. That's going to be a big day for your money and relationships. And then uh, like a, a week later, maybe two weeks later, Mercury stations direct in Virgo on the 16th. This is where the, your work, your labor, your routine, health, habits, that all becomes clear. You've been underneath this transition point when it comes to, again, your work, your health, your habits, your routines. Um and when Mercury stations direct, it's like all of your plans come together. It's like, okay, this is how I'm executing myself. This is what, uh, not executing yourself, executing your plans. This is how your, this is how your work is going to go. This is when things start to at least move forward when it comes to the work stuff. So this all looks really good. September 15th, that's, or September 16th, whatever you want to call it. That's when things will start really moving forward when it comes to, again, work, health, routine, and even technology. This might be a big technology problem time. So then we get to October, and this is where Mars conjoins the South Node in Libra. This is happening on October 4th. This is a little not good. This is not a fun one. Some of you might enjoy it. It might be good for you. Again, you know, everyone's going to be experiencing this differently. But, um, whoops, I totally messed this up. This is actually not in your fifth house. This is in your seventh house. My bad. I did a lot of these slides, so some of them might be a little bit messed up. But this is in your seventh house of relationships, of other people. And Mars severs. Mars cuts. Mars, 
you know, inflammates. Mars causes fights and conflicts and problems. And this is happening in your seventh house of relationships, um, of other people. This is also getting us ready for eclipse season. So there's about to be eclipses here. So this to me sounds like really getting rid of a relationship, separating yourself from someone. Mars and Libra uh, on the South Node is kind of like the surrendering to somebody. But like, you know what? I'm over this. You know what? I'm done. It's not even worth fighting anymore. The other way this might look is like maybe you feel like you have to surrender to someone of like, you know, maybe you're the one who's been in a conflict mode. And this is the time to really kind of like let go of that conflict and try to strive for peace. But in my opinion, I think this seems much more gearing you towards um, maybe separating from relationships and maybe not being, because again, the North Node's in your first house. Like there's so much focus on you and in order to go your way, you've got to do, you know, like the North Node's ruler Mars is in Libra on the South Node in your seventh house. There's this sort of like, hey, it might be hard to focus on you when you are focused on this relationship. And maybe if you're in a committed relationship and you guys are happy, maybe you just have to spend more time with your partner and your relationship. And maybe that you kind of have some resentment for that, or maybe you're upset about it because you have to do that. But that's a part of that's a part of a relationship. So that's going to feel really heavy. That's going to feel really exhausting and draining. And it's going to feel like a lose-lose situation possibly. But then about a week later, Mars enters Scorpio. And this is where the, your energy really kicks into change. Eighth house rules other people's money, death, debt, taxes, the occult secrets, all of that stuff, right? And your ruling planet Mars is going to be going into the eighth house. So all of a the sudden, there's this really big focus on other people's money, shared resources. Mars is in, uh, it's in its home sign in Scorpio. So there's all of this like, you know, we got to handle this. We got to attack this. We're, we got to come after this. And so this is where also Mars heats up, severs, burns. It's going to be going through your eighth house of shared resources. Maybe you have to spend more money on your partner. Maybe you have to, maybe more uh, people are dependent on your money right now. Uh, maybe you have to have to have access to other people's wealth and resources at this time. This is also going to bring up death, occult, secrets. So you might be a little bit on edge, but you kind of work your best that way, right? You're an Aries rising. You want to be charged up and ambitious. And this will feel like that time, but not like Mars and Aries where you just feel like brave and confident. This is Mars and Scorpio. It's like you don't want to be here. So you're just going to, you know, do your business and get the fuck out. But a lot of it has to do with shared resources, other people's money. And then... Right after that, on October 14th, we have our solar eclipse in Libra. So this is actually our first eclipse that we have in Libra. And it's in your seventh house, relationships, other people, open enemies. This is a eclipse. This is an emergency event. This is like, oh, this is what has to happen. And it's on the south node. This is like moving on, getting rid of, letting go, a shift in the balance with relationships, and, you know, again, if you're in a committed and happy relationship, this is much more on your partner, right? This is not really much to do with you. Um, so maybe your partner's going through something. Or, or if you're in a rocky relationship, this is when things might be moving on. Um, same thing, too. This is going to be bringing up a lot of the Venus and Leo stuff that we had going on. Venus will be in Virgo and opposite Saturn at this time. So this might bring a lot of stress to the relationship. And so this really, in my opinion, just seems like a lot of stress in relationships. And there might be this kind of like moment where, you know, you kind of have to make peace with things. You kind of have to find a balance and it's not going to feel good, but it's what has to happen in order for you to move forward. So then we move to November. We get to the end of the year. Saturn stations direct in Pisces on November uh, 4th. Like I said before, Saturn has been retrograde. You've been reconsidering, you know, where you get in your own way, what limits you, um, you know, repressed, unacknowledged parts of yourself. And as Saturn stations direct, there's something about March that we're coming back to here. So again, remember when Mar remember when we get to March and Saturn goes into Pisces? This is where it's like, okay, I know what I need to clear up. Okay, being more intentional about the time that you spend alone, not just doing it by accident. This is an understanding and being aware of who your hidden enemies are, who your real friends are. Um, this is being much more ambitious and excited about being more private with your work, being more isolated and just doing the deep work like in your mind. The 12th house is very like subconscious and you're going to feel limited or constricted there. And so it's going to force you to focus on that area. And this is where you feel more excited about taking on the responsibility, right? Saturn retrograde is like, like, uh, oh, this is weird. Um, why am I doing this? This is, you know, feeling super weird. And Saturn going direct is like, all right, I'm used to it. Let me, you know, just handle it. So then we get to uh, November 17th, 
We have the Mars, Kazemi, and Scorpio. So this is a really big deal for you guys too, because this is again also in the eighth house of other people's money, death, debt, taxes, the occult secrets. And this is a resetting point. Because remember, a Kazemi is when uh this a planet conjoins the sun. And this is happening literally in your uh eighth house of other people's money, debt, inheritance, death. This could be a death of someone. It can. So just trigger warning. It's also going opposite Jupiter and Uranus. So this seems like there's going to be this moment around the beginning of November where expenses all of a sudden come up in a weird way and, you know, money's going to be all over the place. You're going to feel a little bit like, fuck, I'm, you got to spend money here. I got to do this. There's going to be a lot of bills that probably come up in your way. But this is like when you really recharge yourself, right? This is your ascendant ruler conjoining the sun. This is really a shift in how you operate things. And you might be a little bit more on edge after this, but this is the eighth house of like serious business. Like, you know, something internal, something like inside of you is like shifting and being like, no, this is what I'm serious about. No, this is what I'm targeting. No, this is what I'm going for. And it might feel a little like, you know, like um, you might feel a little bit pumped up but on an anxious level, but it should be very productive if you use it that way. And then right after that, once we get to the end of uh, November, we get to the 24th, Mars enters Sagittarius. This will feel much better, right? We don't necessarily like Mars and Scorpio because it's in your eighth house. But this is going into your ninth house. Spirituality, religion, far distance travel, higher education, publishing, social media. This is Mars and Sag too. It's very explorative. It's very like, let's go over here. Let's go over there. And as Mars goes into your ninth house, this is a really big focus on, again, traveling, learning, going for things. Mars and Sag is very like, you know, shoot first, ask questions later. It's very adventurous. And Mars will square Saturn. So there's something about maybe your beliefs or your education that might get in the way of your work. Maybe you have some travel plans that get in the way of your work. You know, this is also maybe you being very distracted by things is getting in the way of your work, or maybe you're finding yourself really distracted by, you know, information and not actually applying that information. But this just seems much more like Mars and Scorpio will feel very anxious and you'll feel like you have to be a very like anal about stuff. This is where you can probably be a little bit more fun and expressive. Then we get to December. And the last two things that we're dealing with is Mercury's retrograding in Capricorn. Again, in your 10th house of career, reputation, legacy, What's interesting about this one is Mercury, this is on December, what, 13th? Mercury is going to station retrograde at the same degree it's stationed direct on. So remember in the beginning of this video when I said Mercury is going to station direct in January and things will be moving forward? There's going to be something that comes up that I should say there's going to be something that happened in January of 2023 that you're going to come back to in December of 2023. Um, and that all happens here. Mercury's going to retrograde in your 10th house of your career, your reputation, your legacy. So again, a delay, a schedule change, maybe a work change here. Mercury rules your sixth house of, you know, day-to-day -day things, organizing, you know, health, habits. So this just seems like a schedule change with work. But then right after that, uh, pretty much right as we get into New Year's Eve, that is when Jupiter stations direct. So again, what's also cool about this, uh, um, what's cool about this uh, Mercury retrograde is Mercury is going to be trining Jupiter the whole time. And so Jupiter will station direct by we get by the time we get to New Year's Eve. So this is where the money stuff starts coming back into play again, where it's like, okay, this is where I'm taking my money. This is where I'm taking my finances, right? There might be this period of growth and then this period of like kind of like trying to, you know, get used to that new growth. And then this is where you kind of get it figured out. Mercury's retrograde. It's also going to be going back into your ninth house of like learning, publishing, education. But as Jupiter stations direct, it's like that money situation gets figured out. A lot of this has to do with also like money and traveling and money and, you know, maybe school debt or money and, you know, um, learning things. That's really where a lot of this is going to come up. But once Jupiter stations direct, I think this is a great energy to go into the new year for. And that's the last transit of 2023. That's pretty much everything that's happening this year for you guys. So let me know what you guys are looking forward to the most in the comments below. Please leave me a comment. Like this video if you like this video. Again, I'm also doing consultations. So if you want to know specifically how this year is going to be affecting you and you want to know your time lords and everything else that's going on in your chart, feel free to book a reading with me on my website, camwhiteastro.com. And with that being said, I'll be seeing you guys next time.